Welcome to introduction to marketing essentials. In this module, we will describe the major functions of sales management and then go about understanding the sales management process. To start, the sales force management plays a critical role in achieving a company's broader marketing objectives. Although firms differ in the specifics of how salespeople and the selling effort are managed, the sales management process is similar across the firms. So the objectives may be different, but the process is the same. Sales management consists of three interrelated functions. The first is sales plan formulation. The second is sales plan implementation. And the last is evaluation of the sales force. These are the three stages of this process. Is starting with the sales plan formulation. So that is the first stage. Here it includes setting objectives, organizing the sales force and developing account management policies. The second stage of this process is the sales plan implementation. So sales force recruitment and selection, sales followed by sales, tra sales force training and sales force motivation and compensation. And the third st step in this process is the sales force evaluation, quantitative assessment and qualitative or behavioral evaluation. So now let us look at the sales plan formulation. That is the first step of this process. Formulating the sales plan is, is the most basic of the three sales management function. The sales plan is a statement describing what is to be achieved and where and how the selling efforts of salespeople is to be deployed. Sales plan for formulation involves three tasks. First is setting objectives, then organizing the sales force, and the third is developing account management policies. So now what is these three things? We will start with the first one that is setting objectives and we are talking about the first step of this process. So this is the first step of this process that is the sales management process. And the first step in this first uh, in the sales management formulation is setting objectives. So setting objectives is central to sales management because this task specifies what is to be achieved. In practice, objectives are set for the total sales force and for each sales person individually. Selling objectives can be output related and focus on rupee or unit sales volume, number of new customers added or profit. Alternatively, they can be input related and emphasize the number of sales call and selling expenses. Output and input related objectives are used for the sales force as a whole and for each sales person. Another type of objective that is behaviorally related is typically specific for each salesperson and includes his or her product knowledge, customer set service satisfaction ratings, and selling and communication skills. Whatever objectives are set, they should be precise and measurable and specify the time period over which they are to be achieved. Once established, these objectives serve as the performance standards for the evaluation of the sales force and the third function of the sales management. The second step in this process is organizing the sales force. Establishing a sales organization is the second task in formulating the sales plan. There is no one best sales organization for all companies in all situations. However, the organization of the sales force should reflect the marketing strategy of the firm. So companies organize their sales force on the basis of geography, customer or product or service. Now how they go about doing it on the basis of geography? A geographical structure is the simplest organization where the country or the entire world is the first divided into regions and each region is divided into district or territories. Salespersons are assigned to each district with defined geographical boundaries and call on all customers and represent all products sold by the company. The main advantage of this structure is that it can minimize travel time, expenses and duplication of selling efforts. However, if a firm's product or customers require the specialized knowledge, then a geographical structure is not suitable. Then comes another, another type of organization, organizing the sales force is on the basis of the customer. So a customer sales organization structure is used when different types of buyers have different needs. In practice, this means that a different sales force calls on each separate type of buyer or marketing channel. 
For example, Kodak switched from a geographical to a marketing channel structure with different sales team serving specific retail channels, mass merchandisers, photo speciality outlets and food and drug stores. The rationale for this approach is that more effective specialized customer support and knowledge are provided to the buyers. However, this structure often leads to higher administrative cost and some duplication of selling efforts because two separate sales forces are used to represent the same product one to one type of customer and another type of another sales force to another type of customers although they may be selling the same thing so a, a variation of the customer's organizational structure is major account management or key accounts management it is the practice of using teams selling to focus on important customers so as to build mutually beneficial long term cooperative relationships it involves teams of sales service and other technical personnel who work with purchasing manufacturing engineering logistics and financial executives in customer organizations procter and gamble use this approach with walmart so procter and gamble have this this kind of sales force to sell to walmart the third type of this organization is product or service based a product sales organizational structure is used when a specific knowledge is required to sell a product for example dalmia bharat group has a sales force that sells sugars to retailers and another sales force that sells specialty cement products to manufacturers the primary advantage of this structure is that sales people can develop expertise with technical characteristics applications and selling methods associated with a particular product or family of products however this structure also produces high administrative costs and duplication of selling efforts because two companies sales people may call on the same customer selling different things now let us look at this third step of the sales uh, plan uh, formulation that is developing account management policies the third task in formulating a sales plan involves developing account management policies so this involves specifying who sales uh, people should contact what kinds of selling and customer service activity should be engaged in and how these activities should be carried out so now you see that now we are training the sales people how to go about uh, contacting what to say how to say etc uh, to the customers this policy might state which individual in a buying organization should be contacted the amount of sales and service efforts that different customers should receive and the kinds of information sales person should collect before or during a sales call an example of an account management policy is given in the figure 38.2 it shows how different accounts or customers can be grouped according to level of opportunity and the firm's competitive sales position when a specific account names are placed in each cell sales person clearly sees which account should be contacted with what level of selling and service activity and how to deal with them for example accounts in cell 1 and 2 might have high frequencies of person sales call and increased time spent on a call cell 3 accounts will have a lower call frequencies and cell 4 accounts might be contacted through telemarketing or direct mail rather than in person so this is what this looks like so this is an account management policy grid grouping customers according to level of opportunity and the firm's competitive sales position so now you see that on this here we have this competitive position of sales organization and it varies from high to low then we have this account manage opportunity level it varies from high to low and these are the four cells 1 2 3 and 4 now let us look at what happens in one so the first is attractiveness accounts offer a good opportunity because they have high potential and the sales organization has a strong position account management policy includes accounts should receive a high level of sales calls and service to retain and possibly build account in the second cell where the account opportunity level is low but competitive position of sales organization is high the attractiveness is accounts are somewhat attractive because the sales organization has a strong position but future opportunities are limited while the account management policy 
says that account should receive a moderate level of sales and service to maintain the current position of the sales organization. Now, let us move on to the third cell that is where the competitive position of sales organization is low, but account opportunity level is high. Here the attractiveness is the account may offer a good opportunity if the sales organization can overcome its weak position. The account management policy includes emphasizing a heavy sales organization position or shift resources to other accounts if a stronger sales organization position is impossible. In this fourth quadrant here, where both the account opportunity level and competitive position of sales organization, both of them are at a low. Here the attractiveness means accounts offer little opportunity and the sales organization position is weak. And the account management policy says consider replacing personal calls with telephone sales or direct mail to service accounts. Consider dropping the account if unprofitable. So thus, now let us move on to the sales plan implementation. So we the first step was the formulation, the second is implementation. The sales plan is put into practice through the task associated with the sales plan implementation. While sales plan formulation focuses on doing the right things, implementation emphasizes on doing things right. So the three major tasks involved in implementing a sales plan are first is the sales force recruitment and selection. The second is sales force training followed by sales force motivation and compensation. Now let us look at what happens in sales force recruitment and selection. Uh, effective recruitment and selection of salesperson is one of the most crucial tasks of sales management. And it entails finding people who match the type of sales position required by a firm. Recruitment and selection practices will differ greatly between order taking and order getting sales positions given the difference in the demand of these two jobs. Therefore, Recruitment and selection begin with a carefully crafted job analysis and job description followed by a statement of job qualification. Now let us look at what are these things. A job analysis is a study of a particular sales position including how the job is to be performed and the tasks that make up the job. Information from a job analysis is used to write a job description, a written document that describes jobs or relationships and requirement that characterize each sales position. And the job description explains to whom the salesperson reports, how a salesperson interact with other company personnel, the customer to be called upon, the specific activities to be carried out, the physical and mental demands of the job and the type of products and services to be sold. So, the job description is then translated into a statement of job qualification, including the aptitudes, knowledge, skills and a variety of behavioral characteristics considered necessary to perform the job. Qualification for order getting sales positions often include the expectations of buyers. So the first is imagination and problem solving ability, second is strong work ethics. The third is honesty, four is intimate product knowledge, fifth is effective communication and listening skills and the sixth is attentiveness reflected in responsiveness to buyer's need and customer loyalty and follow up. Firms use a variety of methods for evaluating prospective sales people. Personal interviews, reference checks and background information provided on application forms are the most frequently used methods. The second step is sales force training. The recruitment and selection of sales people is a one time event. So now it may take a lot of time and, uh, and money to recruit and select a, a sales person. But sales force training is an ongoing process and that affects both new and seasoned sales people. So this sales training happens for both the new sales people and those who are already working in the company. But although this recruitment and selection is one time process, but this training keeps on happening. So the training for the new sales people may be different from those the, the, from that of the seasoned sales people, but still it is a, an ongoing process. So, sales training covers much more than selling practices. For example, IBM Global Service salespeople sell consulting and various information technology services. 
टू प्रोवाइड द स्टेट ऑफ द आर्ट सर्विसेज सेल्स पीपल एट आई बी एम टेक एट लीस्ट टू वीक्स ऑफ इन क्लास एंड इंटरनेट इंटरनेट बेस्ड ट्रेनिंग ऑन बोथ कंसल्टेटिव सेलिंग एंड द टेक्निकल आस्पेक्ट ऑफ बिजनेस सो नाउ यू सी दैट दिस इज हाउ दे गो अबाउट ट्रेनिंग देयर सेल्स पीपल ऑन द जॉब ट्रेनिंग इज द मोस्ट पॉपुलर टाइप ऑफ ट्रेनिंग फॉलोड बाय इंडिविजुअल इंस्ट्रक्शंस टॉट बाय एक्सपीरियंस्ड सेल्स पीपल सो इट इज ऑन द जॉब ट्रेनिंग सो वेन दे आर सेलिंग दे गेट ट्रेनड एंड ऑल्सो इट इज फॉलोड बाय इंस्ट्रक्शन फ्रॉम द एक्सपीरियंस्ड सेल्स सेल्स पीपल sales person those who uh, experienced sales person are those those obviously those people those who have already gone through this process formal classes seminars taught by sales trainers and computer based training are also popular here another of another uh, thing that is important here is and which is the third step is the sales force motivation and compensation now you see that company has has uh, spent lots of money in identification and hiring of the people so now they have to retain the uh, retain those sales, sales people and that will depend upon the their motivation and compensation so a sales plan cannot be successfully implemented without motivated sales people research on sales person motivation suggests that a clear job description should be there there should be effective sales management practices a personal need for achieve, achievement and proper compensation incentives or rewards that will produce a motivated sales people so these are so it is not only about compensation or incentives but other things also that will produce a motivated sales person the importance of compensation as a motivating factor means that close attention must be given to how sales person are financially rewarded for their efforts and the sales people are paid using one of these three plans so either they get paid through state salary or state commissions only or a, a combination of salary and commission both of them each compensation plan has its advantages and disadvantages now let us look at what is this state salary under a state salary compensation plan a sales person is paid a fixed fee per week month or a year a state salary plan is easy to administer and gives management a large measure of control over how sales people allocate their efforts however it provides little incentive to expand sales volume because at the end of the day the sales person will get the same salary so this plan is used when sales people engage in many non selling activities such as account or customer servicing the second type of compensation is a straight commission with a straight commission compensation plan a sales person's earning are directly tied to the sales or profit generated for example an insurance agent might receive a 2% commission of rupees 2000 for selling a 1 lakh life insurance policy a straight commission plan provides the maximum amount of selling incentives but can discourage sales people from providing customer service this plan is common when non selling activities are minimal and the third is the combination of salary and commission the plan con- contains a specified salary plus a commission on sales or profit generated combination plans are most preferred by sales person and attempt to build on the advantages of salary and commission plans while reducing the potential shortcomings of each a majority of company use combination plans today then there are some non monetary rewards are also given to sales people for meeting or exceeding the company's objectives or the or the sales objectives these rewards includes trips honor societies distinguished sales person award and letters of commendation some unconventional rewards include the new pink cadillac and bukes and jewelry given by mary kay cosmetics to outstanding sales person Mary Kay in with 12000 cars has the largest fleet of general motors car in the world then comes sales force evaluation the final function in the sales management process involves evaluating the sales force so now it is this at the last comes this evaluating the fourth sales force which is also a very important part of this uh, sales uh, management process it is at this point that sales people 
people are assessed as to whether sales objectives were met and account management policies were followed or not. And here both these quantitative and behavioral measures are used to tap different selling dimensions. Now let us look at what is this quantitative assessments. Quantitative assessments are based on input and output related objectives set forth in the sales plan. Input related measures focus on the actual activities performed by salespeople such as those involving sales calls, selling expenses and account management policies. The number of sales calls made, selling expenses related to sales made and the number of reports submitted to superiors are frequently used input measures. Output measures often appear in a sales quota. A sales quota comes, contains specific goals assigned to a salesperson, sales team, branch sales office or a sales district for a stated period of time. Rupee or unit sales volume, last year current sales ratio, sales of a specific products, new accounts generated and profits achieved are the typical goals. The time period can range from one month to one year. The next is the behavioral evaluation or the qualitative evaluation of the sales force. So, behavioral measures are also used to evaluate sales people. These include assessments of a salesperson's attitude, attention to customers, product knowledge, selling and communication skills, appearance and professional demeanor. Even though these assessments are sometimes subjective, they are frequently considered and in fact inevitable in salesperson evaluation. These factors are often important determinants of quantitative outcomes. A lot of companies now include customer satisfaction as a behavioral measure of salesperson performance. For example, at Microsoft, half of a salesperson commission is dependent on customer satisfaction ratings. Increasingly, companies are using marketing dashboards to track salespeople performance for evaluation purposes. Next comes Salesforce automation and customer relationship management. So, personal selling and sales management have undergone a technological transformation with the integration of Salesforce automation and customer relationship management processes. The convergence of computers, information, communication and internet technologies have transformed the sales func function in many companies and made the promise of customer relationship management a reality. Salesforce automation also uh, written as SFA is the use of these technologies to make the sales function more effective and efficient. SFA applies to a wide range of activities including each stage in the personal selling process and management of the Salesforce itself. Salesforce automation exists in many forms. Examples of Salesforce automation applications include computer hardware and software for account analysis, time management, order processing and follow-up and product and sales training. Each application is designed to ease administrative tasks and free times for salespeople building customer relationships, designing solutions and providing services. So, what this Salesforce automation does is to shift those non-value adding tasks to, uh, to uh, information technology so that the sales people they have much more time with them to interact with the customer and finding solutions to their problems and needs rather than just filling up various types of forms and so on and so forth. So, now let us look at the Salesforce technology. So, technology has become an integral part of field selling. Today, most companies supply their field Salesforce with laptop computers. For example, sales people for Godiva chocolates use their laptop computers to process orders, plan time allocations, forecast sales and communicate with Godiva personnel and customers. In a department store's buyer's office, a salesperson can calculate the order cost and discount, transmit the order, obtain a delivery day within minutes from Godiva order processing department. So, now you see that whole of this process has become so streamlined and less time consuming easy. 
Toshiba American Medical System sales people use laptop computers with built-in DVD capabilities to provide interactive presentations for their computerized tomographic that is CT and magnetic resonance imaging scanners. The computer technology allows customers to see elaborate three-dimensional animations, high resolution scans and video clips of the company's products and operations as well as narrated testimonials from satisfied customers. So you see that on these laptops, they, uh, the salespeople can show lot of things to the customers, which is difficult to, uh, to communicate to them otherwise without the use of technology. Toshiba has found this application to be effective both for sales presentation and for training of its salespeople. The next in line is the Salesforce communication. So technology has changed the way salespeople communicate with customers, other salespeople and sales support personnel and the management of the company. Electronic mails and voice mails are common communication technologies used by salespeople today. Mobile phones and tablet devices technology now allow salespeople to exchange data, text and voice transmissions. These technologies provide information at the salesperson convenience for answering customer questions and solving the problems. Perhaps the greatest impact of Salesforce communication is the application of internet technology. Today, salespeople are using their company's intranet for a variety of purposes. At HP Enterprise Services, a professional service firm, salespeople access its intranet to download client material, marketing contents, account information, technical papers and competitive profiles. So you see that now this is information technology is used by salespeople for a variety of purposes. Otherwise, earlier they used to have all those files and hard, hard copies and then they spent lots of time on searching for the right kind of paper. So in addition, HP Enterprise Service offers training classes that salespeople can take anytime and anywhere. Numerous applications of Salesforce automation promise to boost selling productivity improve customer relationships and decrease selling cost. In order to conclude this module, in this module we have learned that the sales management consists of three interrelated functions. The first is sales plan formulation, second is sales plan implementation and the third is evaluation of the sales force. Sales plan formulation involves setting objectives, organizing the sales force and developing account management policies. Sales plans implementation involves Salesforce recruitment, selection, training, motivation and compensation. Finally, Salesforce evaluation focuses on quantitative assessments and behavioral measures of sales performance. And these are the three books for, uh, used for this module. Thank you.